Hello, well I've got a nice piece of lilac here and it's just too good for the wood burner. It's lovely. Friend very kindly gave it to me, very kind to select it off. And I'm going to be making some leather awl handles for sewing. Awl hats as they're often known. If this was green wood, I straight off the tree, I'd be splitting it with wedges and then putting it on my shave horse. But it's seasoned, fairly well seasoned I think. So I'm going to try splitting it open if I can and then I will turn it on the lathe. The reason for doing this first split is there's a nice crack here and I want to see in which direction the grain is going. If I use a bandsaw it will just go straight down through the wood. But if I use my wedges and split it, it will split with the grain so I can then cut it on the bandsaw keeping the grain going from sort of top to tail and it will make everything far more strong it will turn nicely etc. So applying a bit of green woodworking to modern woodworking I suppose. Yep, it is very hard, it is splitting. It's obviously got quite a, a twisted grain which is fine, I mean I can, as I say, work with that, I know what I'm dealing with. I better pop some safety goggles on as I am using wedges and a hammer. Steel on steel is never good for eyes. Going to get another wedge in. Always have to avoid the temptation to put your hand in the crack. It'd be disastrous. You'd quick way to lose some fingers. There we have it. As expected, a, a quite a twist on this one. I think it's going to be quite a, a little challenge, and it's quite sort of dried out on its surface, so the actual cracks go into its surface. But what I'll do next, I'll pop it on the bandsaw. I can now see the grain and I can try and work with the grain of the wood to try and cut out bits with nice straight grain going through. And I'll get some bits prepared for the wood lathe. Well, it's got a very nice colouring in its centre. I'm going to have to be careful because I've got cracks going through it. There's some decent material there, so I'm sure I can do something with that. There you are. Who said you can't have your cake and eat it? I've got, a, out of one of these bits, I've already got two handles and a nice bit of firewood. I quite enjoy sort of working with wood which isn't too perfect because you actually get all the character and you often get nicer bits of wood if you go for hedgerows and try and find things which aren't perhaps quite so usual, you know, as I call it. So it's one of the things I like about green woodworking. So I've got quite a good number of wood turning blanks here. So those are the ones from the lilac. And then I also got um, some off a bit of elm that I had knocking around. It's got a few quite nice little like burrs in it. It's these stones, it's a big stone. It always takes up quite a bit of water and I always end up overfilling it. <laughs> Where it goes net. it? Anyway, I'll let that soak a little bit and I'll get it get some sharpening underway. Have to laugh because these things come with whole mass of jigs and I always end up just doing everything freehand really. I, I do occasionally use the jigs. I've got the first bit slightly knobbly with a knot in it set up on the lathe. I'll give it a little play and see what happens. I'm just using a bit of the wood chippings to give this a bit of a polish. So I'm using brass ferrule and I've just done a quick measurement and I've just confirmed I got this to a very slight taper on an interference fit. So that should all be okay. I'm going to just put a bit of this button polish on here and provided one keeps the hand rest well away and one's rag short I quite like doing it on the lathe. But you do need to do it from underneath. Uh, and don't let it get caught. Put it back in there. I'm going to do it more afterwards. But that's enough to just get it going on and start and get the grain to come out. So that would need a little clean up with a file. That's my ferrule. 
So a little bit of interference, but I can coax this on. I may need to just trim it a tiny bit with a knife going round. Just get rid of that burr. Then hopefully the ferrule will be on nice and tight. I can always, if I need to, pop a little bit of super glue or aerodite in here, but I don't think I will. Rather nice. I put a little shoulder on here. So the brass should sit pretty flush with the handle, which should be rather nice. So I'll take this end off and then I'll give it all a bit of a clean up. So that's uh, number one off the block. And I must say the lilac grain does come out very nicely. What I need to do now is to put a dead vertical hole up through this awl so I can then hammer in an actual awl blade. The blade goes sort of across ways and it's really useful for doing a fine stitching hole around the toe of a shoe where you've got lots of holes very close together. The English awl goes the other way and it's a bit so wider which is great for doing around the sort of sides of the shoe but when you come to the toe you want one of these ideally because you can get more in. Well that's what it seems to be at the moment from my limited experience. So anyway that's the blade I'm using so I will pop that on the handle and I use a little bit of leather just tucked on the end here to keep it nice and sharp so it doesn't get damaged. There we are, done it coming out. There we are, I've tapped that in and that's my first hand all done. I do like that patterning on it, it's rather nice. Well I've just been trying the burr elm that I've got and so I've just turned up this one which has come out quite nicely. It's, I do like the burrs. It's again a little brass ferrule. I'm sort of developing a bit of a technique for these. This is number three now that I'm doing um, where I just get them roughly round and then I use my parting gouge to mark where I want the parts and it's all roughly by eye and then I do the skew chisel to do the shaping. Yeah it's now 9.4 which is pretty close to where I want to be. It's a nice tough wood the lilac, very close grained. I can now get that blade in. Quite pleased with that. I'll put a bit more polish on it, give it a little bit more sanding later. Well, there you have it, a few nice little awl handles to keep me going and I've got a different sort of variety of awls here. So I've got some larger ones, some front toe awls, some finer ones. Well thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Well that's if you've subscribed, if you haven't please do.